All right, so in this tutorial, what we're going to do is use one of the effects in the effects window, the directional blur effect, and we're going to apply that to one of the objects in this in this template here. You see, we have this nice <clears throat> kind of sport animation of coming up next. Let me just hide the lights in here. So we have this coming up next animation. I want to blur that coming up next as it as it comes up on the y-axis and then rests in its place. Then you see the camera does a nice little rotation or kind of pan around those objects. So initially when we see this object it's going to be blurred and then it's going to get nice and crisp as you see it right now. Now what we're going to do that, how we're going to do that <coughs> is um, finding the object first of all in the object manager that we want to use to blur and we're going to actually use this layer logo and if I hide it you see what what object that is in the uh, perspective in the main viewport there. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually apply the effect to that object in the scene director. And here's the object right now in the scene director. It's called layer layer logo, right? So what we're going to do is now go into the effects window. I'm going to take that directional blur effect and drag it onto that object and make sure I position it at position 0. And you can see that actually it's actually doing the blur. It's blurring the object already. Um, so if I double click on this directional blur, I'll get the actual window properties for this effect. And you can see that by default is a strength of 5. Now if I put that 5 and change it to 50, you see how much it blurs. Which is a really cool you know, effect in a real-time engine. But something's wrong with this. I don't want it to blur horizontally, which is what it's doing now. You can see the direction here is 90. I want to put that direction back to 0. And then we have that motion blur exactly how I want it because it's 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 hor it's vertical now as opposed to horizontal. So as it starts off, you're going to see that blur, and maybe around maybe around here it starts to fade away because the object's slowing down, and you, and you wouldn't see the blur when the object's slowing down. So what we're going to do is we're going to press this little arrow, and this basically shows the keyframe button. So at this point, I want to press a keyframe, and you can see that keyframe that's just been made here in the uh, in the timeline. I'm going to move the cursor over to about here. I'll make another keyframe, and I can take that keyframe now and drag it down as much as I want to. So I'm taking. So basically, what I've done is I've I've added this. I've animated this effect from being on to not being on. An expression interpolated in between those two values there. So as it comes up, it rests into, play, into place. Now this directional blur is 100 frames in length. We can actually change that again from the this main window here at the top. Just click and drag down and it'll actually bring it down. I'm going to say OK to that. And I have this this effect exactly how I want it to be. Now I'm not going to add a blur on the other two objects because I want those to be nice and crisp coming into view. They're not really moving as quick as the coming up logo. So let's go into the sequencer now and see how this all looks. looks. So this is it, the coming up template. Double click on it. That looks nice. Let's do that again. Cool. Thanks for watching.